document here. So this mm -hmm. is the Human Rights Act 1993, okay? Okay, yeah. And you look here, it doesn't say New Zealand. No. Look, do you see that there? So yeah. it doesn't say New Zealand. Now you go to, it says that this act is administered by the Ministry of Justice. And you can go to the title, right? And here is the title of the act. It's the Transitional Savings Administrative Provisions and Human Rights. It says an act to consolidate and amend the Race Relations 1971 and the Human Rights Commission and to provide better protection of human rights in New Zealand in accordance with the United Nations Covenants or Conventions on Human Rights. So that's what the Act is about. Mm -hmm. So it's to work together with the United Nations on the human rights, okay? So yes. we're going to go to... Now, I'll go, I just want to go over this thing with you first. So you look there, and it doesn't say New Zealand there. No. Okay? So then you go mm -hmm. to... Um, then you go to your 1990 Bill of Rights Act. So you see that they're both acts. That is an act, yeah. right? And then this yeah. one here is an act. And you see here it's got New Zealand Bill of Rights Act. Hey. So that's got New Zealand. So what's going on is that this one is in Section 19, right? It yep. goes to Section 19 and then in Section 19, it connects you to the Human Rights Act. Oh. So that means that the Human Rights Act has to go through this New Zealand Act in Bill order to get into New Zealand. The only way it can get into New Zealand is through this, right? So, so it's key back on to the uh, New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990. Okay. It's piggyback on yes. to the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990. Right. But, wow. but, We've got this 1688 Bill of Rights, right? Mm. And this one, do you see there? It doesn't yeah. have New Zealand on it. No. And it doesn't have the word act, act. No. on it, right? Now, it in a kind of a strange way, this can come through the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act because it comes in through Section uh, 28, which says, existing rights or freedoms shall not be held abrogated or restricted by reason only that the right is not included in this Bill of Rights or if it is included only in part. So this is an existing Bill of Rights. Yes. But at the time that this was created, this here did not exist. Mm. Are you with me? Yes. So we've got these three things, right? But we've yep. got an extra here. How, how do we get this Bill of Rights here, right? Well, then we've got our Treaty of Waitangi.
So there you've got your Treaty of Waitangi. And you see that that is not an act. Mm. See, it's not an act. No. And so that is connected up with this. They're married together. These two here are married together because this here cannot enter into New Zealand really without this here. But this here cannot exist without this here. Absolutely. You see, so that's your Pākehā and your Māori right there, isn't it? I, I absolutely agree with that. I do. Because they can't exist without each other. You could not have had the Treaty of Waitangi without the Queen, Her Majesty yes. the Queen Victoria. Well, Queen Victoria, well, you, well, Queen Victoria cannot <laughs> exist without the Prince and Princess of Orange. Yeah. So Absolutely. she came in on this and attached to this and then this attached to this. So they're really married together, aren't they? Yes. Now you see in there that it's got, because you can see there that it's got Europe and Australia. It doesn't yeah. just say, it basically is saying the whole of Europe. Now... You can go to. And that, and that is most probably why. The, that's most probably why the 1688 doesn't have New Zealand on it because it's not only for New Zealand. Exactly. Yes. 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 That's a revelation you've just made right there, Sharon. That yes. I had not thought of. Because. Um, yes. All, 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 all the Commonwealth. All the Commonwealth would come under that 1688. So none of it's got a country on it. It's only who received that bill. Yes. And, and the different Commonwealth countries. Right. And so <laughs> that's why this Human Rights Act um, comes under... That's why this Human Rights Act comes under Section 5 justified limitations which means that they can give it to them if they want or not give it to them if they don't want that is not the case for section 28 for our other rights that were existing before the 1990 was created which rights existed yep. beforehand this one and this one and you clearly cannot have a treaty. It is impossible to have a treaty without a Bill of Rights. Yep. Now, this is now this is the Treaty of Waitangi Act 114, we call it, the 114. Mm -hmm. This is the original Act. You can see here it's got the Majesty Victoria you can see here that the power, it says, with all the rights which the said confederation of individual chiefs respectively exercise or possess, or may be supposed to exercise or to possess over their, listen here, over their respective territories as the sole yep. sovereigns thereof. Right? Now go down to the third article. In consideration thereof, Her Majesty the Queen of England extends to the natives of New Zealand. Her rule, now the natives of the New Zealand would have included, I believe, all of those immigrants that were brought in that were not yet British subjects. And so mm -hmm. it extends to the natives of New Zealand, her royal protection, now listen, and imparts to them all the rights and privileges of British subjects. Now we're going to go to the Treaty of Waitangi Act E. Treaty of Waitangi over here, not the 114, which is the original, 
we'll just put Treaty of Waitangi, New Zealand, right? And we'll go mm -hmm. down to, uh, we should be able to find on archives, I think. Where's archive? Here. So here is the Treaty of Waitangi, right? That yeah. they call Te Tiriti o Waitangi. <laughs> But yeah. what you'll see here is a bunch of codswallop, bull kakaraki, and then what you're going to see here, um, there, here comes the BS. There are two versions of the treaty. watching please there are two versions of the treaty of waitangi in te reo maori and one in english right and so now they have brought in oh it's just not making sense now so they put all this mumbo jumbo up here to distract you so, they have, um, they have, oh my God, they have removed the preamble and this one here, they've given their idea of what Article 1 means. The treaty gave Queen Victoria government, so they have interpreted. And if you go to, oh, oh my God, they have removed, they only speak of Article 1, Article 2, they completely remove Article 3, and they completely remove the preamble. They cheeky, wow. yeah. And um, but here is where they all it all is. And what you'll see here is in the in the the first article here. What you'll see here is that Australia and Europe and immigrants has been removed. That's all been removed. And what, yeah, and then what you'll see here, see here on the second, it says the chiefs will sell land to the queen at a price agreed to. Now listen carefully what it says. We'll sell land to the queen at a price agreed to by the person owning it and by the person buying it, the latter being appointed by the Queen as her purchase agent. So the Queen of England agrees to protect the chiefs and the subscribers and all the people of New Zealand in the unqualified exercise of their chieftainship over the lands, which does not mean ownership of the land. A chieftainship is nothing, Sharon. A chieftainship is nothing. It's like a village chief down at the local council office. Chieftainship over lands is nothing. Villages and all their treasures. So that is nothing, but you can compare. I'll wait and I'll come back. But on the other hand, the chiefs of the confederation and all the chiefs will sell land to the queen at a price agreed to by the person owning it and by the person buying it, appointed by the Queen. Well, anybody can sell land. I can sell land. It doesn't sell, it doesn't say they will sell land that they own. It says that they will just sell land, not land. That, now you look over here to Article the Second, where it says, her Majesty the Queen of England confirms and guarantees to the chiefs and tribes of New Zealand 
and to respect the families and individuals thereof. That includes all of us. The full, yep. exclusive, and undisturbed possession of their lands and estates, forestries, fisheries, and other property which they may collectively or individually possess so long as it is their wish and desire to retain the same in their position. So as long as you want to keep it, you keep it. But the important thing here is that she has really said that you own exclusively all these lands, mm -hmm. all these... Now, why would you accept this piece of crap that they will give you chieftainship over the lands? Most, most of us lowly Māoris don't accept it. Can you see that piece of crap that they've given you? Yes. It's terrible. Look what they've done. And they do not mention in that paragraph any ownership by you whatsoever, not even a single word. You should be down at that to Papa, protesting and getting that damn thing down. Now look here. You can see what it says. But you can see what, but the chiefs and the United Tribes and the individual chiefs yield. Now you see, yield to Her Majesty the exclusive right of preemption over such lands as the proprietors thereof may be disposed to alienate. So they're going to allow aliens to come on their land that they are the proprietors of. Why you people would not be protecting this with every ounce of your being is beyond me. At exactly. such prices as may be agreed upon between the respective proprietors and persons appointed by Her Majesty to treat with them on her. Oh, no, this is Article the Second. So, but you can see here that there is no such mention of any ownership there whatsoever. They've taken out the forestries, they've taken out the fisheries, they've taken out everything oh my god do you have any idea what's going on here now you go and look at the first article that we had the chiefs and the confederation and separate chiefs who have not become members see to her majesty queen of england absolutely and without reservation all the rights and powers of sovereignty. Now, do you understand what that means? It means exactly this, the right of chieftainship over the lands, not ownership, a chieftainship in governance over the lands to protect your ownership that has all been given down here. See what I mean there, Sharon? Of course, yes. they couldn't call the Queen a chief, right? So yep. they gave her, they, they, it doesn't even mention land. It says rights and powers of sovereignty, right? Which means chieftainship, really, over the lands. So that you could claim the second article where you hold full proprietorship you hold the, not proprietorship, the proprietary of your lands here. So she had to govern it so that you could claim your propriety. Without her governance, you could not claim your propriety because you didn't have the laws to do it. You see what I mean? Yes. So, so. That new, that new English version is only talking about chiefs, Kate. Yes. It's not talking about the people. 
it's talking about chiefs. So we don't have a say. Yes. And that we also. Have a say. We can also go to the chief and ask them. Yes. At the end of the day, it's the chief that's going to say yay or nay. He, the chief is going to say yay, yeah, but it doesn't even say that the chiefs own the land. It only says that the chiefs will have the exercise of chieftainship over their lands, which means that the chiefs would be permitted to govern over their lands, but not propriety over their lands. Ownership, owner of their lands, none of that. That's I did that. I, I, I did that piece that the chiefs only have what? Propriety over their lands. No. Because... Maori never owned land. After the Queen established powers of sovereignty, then now, it was made possible the that you did own all the land and it was all yours. But they're trying to take it back to... to um, they're trying to take it back to this. To yes where you don't have any ownership anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And in the... Which is both because if we don't have ownership, somebody else is going to come in and have ownership. Well, they already have. Yes, that's exactly right. Now, if you look yeah. here, Sharon, it says the chiefs of the Confederation and all the chiefs who have not joined give absolutely to the Queen of England forever the complete government over their land. Well, that just doesn't even match because under the Bill of Rights here, that's actually not impossible because the Queen is not permitted to do that because we have right. to be under the Parliament by all of these laws here. The Queen is bound by all of these laws. It's absolutely impossible that the Queen yes. would be permitted to hold government over your land because the Queen does not even hold government because we vote. Now, but look here, but look here. But it's removed. See, in the original it says, see to Her Majesty the powers of sovereignty, which is power to govern, which the said confederation or individual chiefs respectively exercise or possess or may be supposed to exercise or to possess over their respective territories. Now, here she says it, as the sole sovereigns thereof. Oh, so she's saying yes. it's your territories, your respective territories, but I will have rights and powers of governance over those territories that you are the sole sovereigns so that you can then own the propriety to those lands, yeah. estates and fisheries. And then if you choose to, you can sell or you can choose not to sell. To Right. So that's all that power. Right? Yeah. And that's all been removed. But we're going to be coming back. Keep in mind this human rights, so stay there, which is an act, but it only comes into New Zealand through this, which is not, but this here comes through this. This is where the jurisdiction, the jurisdiction of this comes through this and the jurisdiction of this comes through this and the jurisdiction of yeah. this comes through this, but these two cannot survive without each other. So, so you can't take one without the other. It's, it's not possible. You can, um, if you go under this one here, obviously, this one's going to be removed. But I don't feel that you can because the, I don't feel that the Maori had any right to remove our subject status. Yes. They didn't have the right to remove 
Europe and Australia, which I believe that we can go to the European Court about this. Carry on explaining. I won't be right. long. All right. All right. Are you are you going to be going back? Well, I'm going to open up Ratana now. Keep going. All right. I'll open up the Ratana petition. So here is the Ratana petition. And Ratana and 30,000 people went to the court. Now, if you go to the Ratana petition, you can clearly see here. Oh, that's the wrong one. Oops. Right, here is the Ratana um, petition. Right, I'll just make that a bit smaller. Oh, no, I can't. All right. Now, are you still listening to me, Sharon? Oh. I'll have to stop sharing for a minute. I'll, I'll do the sharing first. So if you go to the original Treaty of Waitangi, and it clearly has the words that in consideration thereof, Her Majesty the Queen of England extends to the natives of New Zealand her royal protection and imparts to them all the rights and privileges of British subjects. Now, it clearly says there, rights and privileges. And if you go over to their new false version, you'll see that it says, for this agreed arrangement, therefore concerning the government of the Queen, the Queen of England, not the Queen of the United Kingdom, will protect the ordinary people of New Zealand and will give them the same rights and duties of citizenship as the people of England. All right, I'm not going to wait for you to come back for that, Sharon. Right, who's watching the video? We're going to take just a, a little, little toilet break. And I'll come back in a minute. It's not going to be too long. It's 6.30, so... Just take a little break. Okay, I'm going to go to the This is important. 
Quick go to. I really wanted to tell Ratana about this so he can see where I'm going with all this. So you see here on this third article here, it says mm -hmm. that she'll give if the Majesty the Queen of England gives her royal protection and Uh, Queen of England gives her royal protection and imparts to them all the rights and privileges of British subjects. Right? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, and they, these are the rights and privileges of the British subjects, which has got your freedom of speech, which is in here. It's got many, many, many yeah. rights, but there's your freedom of speech, right? That yep. the freedom of speech ought not be questioned in any court or any place out of Parliament. So that's your right there. That's where that right comes from. Then that matches yes. up to your treaty of your rights and privileges. That's what we had. And then you go over to here and you'll see that that's been removed and they've given you the Queen of England there's no royal protection. That's gone. For this agreed arrangement, therefore, concerning the government of the Queen, the Queen of England will protect all the ordinary people, but not in her royal status, in a person personal status. And will give them the rights and duties of citizenship. Now you see here, it's got rights and duties, right? This is important. And you see here, it has got rights and privileges mm. and royal protection, right? Now yep. I'm going to go out for a minute and... There you go. And I'm going to bring in Ratana. Ratana's nice. petition. Right? Yeah. Are you recording? Yes, I am. Nice. It's going to go up because I've, I've wanted to do this video for a long time, Sharon. So I'm not going to do the whole of Ratana's pet, uh, petition. People can cope. But it's got that the chief, great chief, to Pharaoh Pharaoh and his friends winged their words to the Queen and he said oh, he said some things to the Queen. But anyway, don't worry, but to, to Pharaoh Pharaoh is in this, but we'll go right down. There's a lot of discussion, but the this is the petition of Taku Potuki Wirimo Ratana. Alright? And then you can see here he's got um, he's got um, here is his he says to the honourable to the honourable the speaker and members of the House of Representatives of the Dominion of New Zealand in Parliament assembled and here is the petition. And it's interesting, there's been a bit of a mistake there. They didn't, you see a little mistake there, they didn't have whiteout in those days. When no. you made a mistake in the typewriter, you had to throw the paper out. But this paper was parchment paper and it was very, very, very expensive. So you, yeah. you, he's made a little mistake here. Um, but anyway, he's did it with 30,128 people. Right? Yeah. But what I want to point out to you is that, where did I just see it? He said, these are the facts that the Treaty of Waitangi was signed, 1,840, and 
hang on. The Governor Hobson wrote, now this is by Ratana himself has written this. He's the one that wrote yeah. this, nobody else. And he says that the treaty was signed by 46 head chiefs in the presence of at least 500 inferior degree, of inferior degree. That with the inferior degree mean, meant that they didn't own the land. They were chiefly in that they managed the land, but they I, don't, I believe being inferior means that they did not own the land. Right. Uh, to mine. So these are the 500 signatures that they're talking about that was not on the actual treaty. And why would mm -hmm. they be? They were merely village chiefs. They weren't of significance. They did not have signing rights to lands. They didn't have it. So they. it says here that they were observers in the presence of. So they were simply observers. Um, throughout the islands, adjoin the signatures. Hang on. It says here, look here. The solemn pledge that the most perfect good faith would be kept by Her Majesty's government that their property and their rights and privileges would be most fully preserved. Now, there's a lot of other things in this document that I'm not going to talk about today. But all that I am saying is that it says here, rights and privileges would be most fully preserved, right? Yep. So yeah. that's, that is the evidence, Sharon. That is the evidence that this one that wow. they are putting up at Te Papa Museum is not correct because it gives us rights and duties of citizenship. Could you also go to the part of Ratana where he wanted, was it the treaty? Oh. Yeah. He wanted the treaty to be to. He wanted what? He wanted the treaty to be, is it established in the UK? Oh, yes, Sharon. Now, here is a very, very interesting thing. This is quite interesting because it's bloody awesome. It's it's but now and, and and in fact it is another proof that the original treaty was correct because this is from yeah. him, Ratana himself, and what he says here. Um. Uh, where is it, Sharon? Um, here. He says, your petition, now this is from Ratana himself. Your petitioner therefore prays that the Treaty of Waitangi be embodied in the statute book of the Dominion of New Zealand and of the dominions of the British Commonwealth and, and of the British government, respectively, exactly. in order that all may know that the Treaty of Waitangi is operative, also to preserve the ties of brotherhood between Pākehā and Māori, that's the black man and the white man, for all time. Why would Ratana be going to the House of Representatives of New Zealand and asking that this Treaty of Waitangi become Being part of the British Being government? Yes. Why? Why? So, and of the Commonwealth. Why? As it was because it was always intended. 
to be in a in, treaty. It was oh it, it is a treaty and a treaty cannot be removed because I've researched it and a treaty cannot be removed. Uh, we we cannot oh hang on. We cannot remove the treaty. Uh, a treaty cannot be removed, but the important thing is that we have to show which treaty. treaty. And it clearly says in his his um, writings that it <laughs> is <laughs> the rights and privileges of British subjects. Which would be, which would be the treaty. Not te treaty. Not te treaty. And not only that, it has got Europe and Australia in it. Well, that's why he said those words for Europe and uh, for Europe, the for the whole Commons. Commonwealth and for in the yeah. government, the government of England. Yeah. But this was to be, so I'm telling you that these two documents are married together. Now, what they have come up with later, they came up, so you're, you're up to speed with all that now, aren't you, Sharon? Yes. So you can see that, that that's the keys there. Now, you go back to our Bill of Rights and our freedom of speech, and we're talking about one of our friends, Tapo, who's been put in the prison for hate speech. Right, and yep. what we're saying is that now, if you go here, this was created in 1993. So, could if, I just could I, could I just make a statement? Yeah, we assume it's for hate speech. Oh yes, we we assume. Anyway, let's not use him. There have been threats of hate speech laws. And yes. threats of like even that Barry guy being ordered not to speak and not to share information. So it, yeah. it doesn't need to be him. There can be others. But so where does that come from? Well, that comes from, uh, oh, why is it section 61? I'm on the wrong one. So yeah. if you go here to section 61, you're going to see, rate, I think this is it. I hope I've got this right. Racial disharmony. Racial disharmony. It shall be unlawful. Here's your hate speech law here. It shall be unlawful for any person to publish or distribute written matter which is threatening, abusive, or insulting or to broadcast by means of radio or television or electronic communication words which are threatening, abusive or insulting to use in any public place as defined in section 2-1, we'll look there in a minute, or within the hearing of persons in such public place or at any meeting to which the public are invited or have access, words which are threatening, abusive or insulting. Now, I'm all for the threatening, which we've already got in the Crimes Act, and I'm all for the abusive, yeah. but what is an insult? What is an insult? We can't define it. And to any use in any words which are threat or insulting, the new, so being matter or words likely to excite hostility or to bring contempt to any group of persons who may be coming to New Zealand um, on the ground of colour, race or ethnic or national origin. Well, they call us colonists every single day. By yes. this here, it should be illegal for them to call us colonists when we're born to that country yeah. and they're consistently telling us um so that's all illegal but this is not it because there's actually a penalty of three years in prison 
Exactly. Somewhere, which I, I'm sorry to the viewers, I'm not at assault means. Um, these are summary offences. <laughs> Yeah, I actually, I've made a mistake making this because I wanted to. There's actually a prison sentence of um, of seven years, and I was looking for that, Sharon. Type in penalties. Um, racial oh. arrest. Hang on. There must be a penalty, mustn't there? Yes, there should be. I think it was... Um, Oh, damn, I can't find it, Sharon. It might be in the race relations. Oh, I'll have to come back and make this video uh, again because I wanted to find the HP. I wanted to find the penalties. And there's one in there that's got the religion. Find the race relation papers. Oh, here, look. The current education came into effect when the human right, it creates civil, if, if found guilty of the criminal offence, a person can be prison, imprisoned for up to three months or may pay a fine of up to $7,000. Oh. So I couldn't find that. Oh, it's um 131, Sharon. I one, knew three, it was one. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I oh, yeah. You've got to go over to this one. Oh, no, that's the one we had. Oh, yeah, here it is. Look, every person who commits an offence is liable on conviction to imprisonment for a term ex not exceeding three months or to a fine of $7,000, who with intent incite hostility or ill will against or bring into contempt or ridicule any group of persons in New Zealand on the ground of colour, race, ethnic, national oranges, and of that group of persons. Publish and all of that, users in the public place. So that's, but but that there, you see, it says every person who commits an offence is liable to conviction of that. So you have to, it's very sneaky the way they've done it because you go and look at section 61, right? And yeah. you don't see any penalty. You just say, it just says you're not supposed to do that. And so you don't think very much of that, you know, yeah. insulting someone. You see this yeah. where, where it says insulting someone doesn't look too serious to you, right? Well, that is doesn't. that is repugnant to our 1688 Bill of Rights because you don't know what it means to insult someone. If you said, mm -hmm. what if you just said, I don't like Muslims, I don't like yeah. Jews. And that would be an insult, wouldn't it, to them? Yes. But why do absolutely. I have to like them? I don't have to like them if I don't want to. That's up to me. I cannot like someone if I I don't have to like. I don't like have to like anyone I don't want to like. And I cannot like them if I don't want to like them. Yes. Regardless of, of whether, regardless of race, Nationality. If I don't want to like someone because they're black, then I don't have to like someone because they're black, should I? If you don't want to like someone because they're white, you don't have to like them. 
you're not allowed to hit them, you're not allowed to, you know, threaten them with violence, but you don't have to like That's them, right. Sharon. And if you want to go around and say, I don't like them, that's, is it not your right? Yes. And if they're insulted, well, that's their problem. It's not my problem, is it? And it's probably why a lot of the um, Indonesia, hey, um, Indonesia people are going and reporting on hate speech because of that law. Because they felt insulted. And then we yes. all think we all think the hate speech law doesn't exist in New Zealand. But that just isn't true and because we've got our free speech right. over here. And if yeah. you whip over to here, you've got section 61 and you don't see anything there, right? It's like, oh, yes, so mm. what? I'm going to insult them. Who cares? It doesn't matter. I can do that. But they've been sneaky because right down here, if you don't know about it, way down here,